Hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Ventures, and today we'll be doing part 12, seems like we've really come a lot far, this is gonna be, it's been about a year of these, a little bit over that actually, I think, um, of our Jurassic World Evolution Accurate Dinosaur Mod Collection, where we take a look at uh, mods that have been made for the game that make the animals resemble more their real-life fossil counterparts. And yeah, this is going to be a fun one today. We've got like a, some older ones, and we've got some paleo edits of a lot of very underrated animals that I really, really like to see. And speaking of that, we'll be starting with our first animal. We have got, by Antec, um, we have got Dryosaurus. Now this is a nice one, okay. We have got Dryosaurus as we all know, famous little cutie. But this guy's from the Morrison Formation of the Western United States. And it's quite a cute little guy. We can have a look at some of the changes when he stops and has a feed. So this was a really cool one. I know a lot of this one's been like left out a lot, but it's a really nice dinosaur to put in enclosures, of course, since um a lot of them uh Sometimes feel empty with the big dinosaurs, it just puts a little bit more life into them. I really like this guy here. I believe this is actually based more because there's two species of Dryosaurus. There's uh, Altus, which was described by Barsh in 1878. And then there's a new one described in 2018 called Eldere, which has which is the larger one and has a lot more references. Um, around like skeletals and stuff on the internet. So... That's what it's based on. It's based on the newer species and also a bit bigger. We can see a lot of the changes here if you compare it to the old one. I really like how they, he did the body. Tail's a little bit longer. So the legs. The head looks a lot better in my opinion. It isn't so big and bulbous. It's a bit smaller. See the nice little hands. I like the texture on it too. Look at the little hands. Handsy boys. Very, very cute. I like this little guy's face. I lucky, lucky, lucky. We're watching eat. So this guy's a iguanodont. Believe it or not, like a really, really early one. It's from the late Jurassic, of course. These guys have got quite big too. These are uh, based on some species. They may have got between eight and fourteen feet long, or about 2.4 meters to 4.3 meters and weigh up to about 170 200 pounds even though there's no known adult so there's we kind of have no idea we ran off on the catcher what's your tail dragon for and this new described species is based off one of the largest adults so we kind of have no idea really how big they got since we have no adult remains and the largest specimen is from another species which is Elderay. so we kind of have no idea. We should know quite a lot about it. We know that lived in a moral formation with animals like Camarasaurus, Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus, all of those really famous guys, Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, and it was kind of a very important animal in the habitat and it's very early ornithopod and guanodont so it tells us a lot about the evolution of these groups. I don't know why you tail dragon, but you're still quite cool. I think I think this is actually one of my favorites. I just really like the see the cute little guy. Got a nice little head and everything. See, I like this one. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to the next one. We've got another edit. We have got Matabarasaurus. So now this is a cool guy. This is Matabarasaurus, which is from Australia. It's northeastern, no, northeastern Australia, from the early Cretaceous. It's named Matabarasaurus because it's from a place called Matabara, and that's where it got its name. It's related to an iguanodontian family, uh, 
Batasauridae, I believe how that's pronounced. So a lot of it's actually, uh, it's like a really early isolated group of the Inguanodons. It includes the ones that live on like Heartseek and stuff, like on Bacadon. Look at this wonderful guy. We'll see. Really like this one. I like that a lot, actually. You guys will remember this guy from Walking with Dinosaurs, of course. These are it's actually one of the most completely known um, dinosaurs from Australia, other than Combarosaurus, which is almost from like a perfectly preserved specimen. Really, really cool guy. These guys got about 8 meters long, or 26 feet, and weighed up to 2.8 metric tons. The holotype uh, femur is a little bit over uh, a meter. And there's been a bit of a debate whether these guys were running around and walking quadrupedally, or walking around, obviously, on their back legs, like, kind of like they're doing now on their forelegs. So, people kind of um, originally thought... But the most recent evidence suggests that it was incapable of moving like this. So, more accurately, it'd be walking around on its back legs. Since it's more basal to the group, it kind of didn't evolve the uh, features and anatomy in its hands to be able to support weight on its forelimbs. So, walking around like this is not likely, and there's no way you can change that without the animations. So, that's an inaccurate thing about it. But the general anatomy is... And really cool thing, what makes Matabara famous, of course, with walking with dinosaurs, is obviously this big, big bulbous nose that actually a lot of other iguanodonts and hadrosaurs had that they may have been used to resonate chambers or even since it was slightly cooler around the Australia at the time, may have been even for helping keep their temperature, cool the, uh, warm the air before they breathe it in. But I think that's pretty cool. I like this big guy. Looks wonderful. Walking about. It'd be nice to see some Australian dinosaurs some love. And now he's having a sleep. Clearly not having a problem. Well, let's check out our Dryosaurus. He's tails falling. And we've got another dinosaur next. We're doing a lot of herbivores today, but we've got some interesting ones coming up. We have got. It's not Motosaurus, but you'll see. We have got Ed Montonia, a good boy. So that's is a species of Notosaur from the late Cretaceous. It's known from, there's three different, or two different species, potentially three if you want to be a lumper. There is one from the Horseshoe Canyon formation, I believe that's uh, Longiceps, which is distinguished by having a longer skull, mainly. And But the one that's better known is Rugosidens, and Rugosidens is from Dinosaur Park formation around the Companion between 76 and 75 million years ago. So a little bit younger than Longiceps, and is known from like some pretty good specimens. We have like well-preserved uh, front half of it, not quite as good as like Boreopelta for example, but still really really nice. I really quite like this guy. I see these charismatic spikes, and if you guys know Denvisaurus from the Hal Creek Formation and the Lance Formation, that was originally um, a species of Edmontonia, but it had been split into uh, Denvisaurus, and that's actually Denvisaurus I really like, I think he's a cool boy, especially the Saurian uh, rendition of it, I really like that. I like this wonderful guy, look at him coming up. Very charismatic spikes and such. They lived for a long time in a lot of different formations, so that's cool. And we obviously know that they had this armor here to protect itself from predators. Especially these big spikes around the neck. Especially from things like the Splitosaurus and Gorgosaurus, which lived in a lot of these formations. Since in Dinosaur Park it lived with Parasaurolophus, Centrosaurus, the Splitosaurus, Gorgosaurus, and in Horseshoe Canyon, which is Longiceps, which is a little old, uh, little younger, a bit Montosaurus, uh, Chapsosaurus, uh, 
Albertosaurus and a bunch of different animals. It really kind of shows the evolution. It's kind of Longiceps. Uh, Rugosidens is the oldest, then Longiceps. may not be Anagenesis, but it's kind of the genus, and then it evolves into Denphosaurus, which is right at the end of the Cretaceous with um, T-Rex and stuff in the Hell Freak formation. And I really like how this one came out, actually. I was actually never really a fan of the Notosaurus, because it's just Borealopelta, but messed up to all high heavens. But I really like this moth. I really like the flat body of it. I know it looks really nice. I might actually keep it. I really, really like this guy. He's pretty... like his white face. This one's definitely probably based off Rugosidens. It really has the face of Rugosidens. Plus it's just that's what's better known. He's sleeping. Oh, very, very cute. So while he rests, we'll move on to the next guy. This one's made by Wheat. We have got a new... Stegosaurus. So let's have a look at our Stegosaurus here. Look at this wonderful guy. I really like this one. So we can see here, this has been, if you guys remember like a few, I'm not sure what episode exactly it was, but a while ago we did a Stegosaurus uh, remake, uh, remodel, or mod, and it really wasn't up to scratch to his uh, liking, so he remade it. And I really, really like this remake. We can see it just looks a hell of a lot better. We can see the um, neck's been elongated. It's based a lot more off Sophie, which is the most complete uh, Stegosaurus that we have. You can see he's got a longer neck. And the tail is just more accurate anatomy. And with the right feetsies too. And we also see there's a new texture by Echo Green. But it would be really cool if they made a more accurate one with like these osteoderms. These osteoderms that we know from Stegosaurus that could be placed along here, that could look cool. That's a, one thing I would add. But overall, very, very nice model. I'm really liking this one. You can get either the base texture, which is just the texture in game, but over the new model. Or the Echo Green one, which I would recommend since it looks just so much nicer. And also new skin options and such. It was really nice. It's all pretty... Pretty nice. So we all know Stegosaurus, one of the most famous dinosaurs. Also from the same formation as Dryosaurus. And is very famous for having these long thagomizers at the back here. And these wonderful plates. So the name means Roof Lizard. This guy's wonderful. I'm just liking the texture on this guy because you don't often see mods with new textures unless it's like a JFD one. But I think this one came out really, really well. Just watch him eat. The thing about the remember about Sophie as well is that Sophie is a sub not quite an adult yet, so she does have some pedomorphic or young features that show that she's not a skeleton mature. That's a big word for today, Peter Morphic. Look at this wonderful, wonderful gal. I oh, see she can't gallop and she just ran through me. It's cool, so you can have this one, you can have the accurate Stegosaurus, and also if you get your turn to Jurassic Park, you can get your Jurassic Park accurate Stegosaurus. That's the best of both worlds. I just like, really like Stegosaurus, he's a very, very cool animal. We can see them all coming to drink too. I like it, like it, like it. Very, very much like it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And now, we've got another guy coming up. We have got another antique one. We have in this one here, we have got a new Dreadnoughtus.
we can see here, you can see some of the edits here. We've already had a couple of edits for Dreadnoughtus, but this is probably the latest and greatest, you could say. Because you know how much I get angry about the feet sometimes, or point out the feet. We'll wait until we get to an area where we can have a little bit less grass, but we've got edited feet. So that's awesome. Look at this wonderful face. So Dreadnoughtus is a titanosaur from uh, known from a single species. I think it was discovered in about 2005, but described in 2017 or 2018. And is one of the largest, um, or probably the largest dinosaur known from really, really good remains. That there are dinosaurs that are probably larger, like Argentinosaurus, but that's really only known from a few vertebra and uh, bones and stuff. But this guy is known from quite a lot of the skeletons, so we have a pretty good idea of its how it looked. Very, very wonderful animal. Very, very big boy. And a lot of the estimates have it around about 26 meters long and 49 to 50 tons. So that's about the size of a good whale. It's a very, very big animal. It was wonderful. And its completeness is like... Most sauropods, since they're so big, it's very hard to find them complete. Since there's so much of them to bury. But we were quite lucky to have Dreadnoughtus quite well preserved. About 45%, almost half. And this is quite a good posture too, with his head up a high like that. And it's a really relative, it's like a later relative from Fuklongosaurus and Argentinosaurus. So related to them, so it gives a good idea of some of these even bigger dinosaurs like Argentinosaurus. So that's awesome. And we can see some of the edits here. We see the feet, we can see that we have this big fleshy hoof, no toes on the front foot. Titanosaurs even lost some of their front fingers, some of them. So they basically were just kind of walking on their knuckles. Not even working on their fingers anymore. And then um, we have the big three uh, claws at the back here. And this little tail and body. Wonderful, wonderful animal. <laughs> One of the bestest. You see the legs have also been thinned up a bit. A lot of people think sauropods have really skinny legs, and they kind of do. It's because if you look at elephants, they have very kilometer legs, which means they can put a lot of weight on them without being so thick, just because they're so straight. Like tree trunks or elephant legs or pillars and like Greek um, architecture. So they're very, very good at supporting weight, so they don't need to be as big as heavy. There's a lot of things. You can see the, the fleshy uh, horseshoes there. So you just you can just watch sauropods. They just have such a fun energy to them. Just the majesty. It's almost like going whale watching. You see just the incredible size. It's good that we have video games that we can replicate and get a good feel of these animals. It's awesome. So yeah. Now we've got our last big herbivore, and it's a really weird one. This was originally a Zoo Tycoon one, but they retrofitted it somehow. I'm not sure how they did it, but they managed to retrofit it to make it fit okay in Jurassic World Evolution. We have got... Gigantopithecus, which, if you know your mammals, was a large primate, a bit bigger than a gorilla, the largest ape from the middle to early Pleistocene, so within the last two billion years. They've only known from teeth and a few other small fragments, so we really have no idea what it looks like, but we know that's related to orangutans. And there's one species, originally two species, but there's lumped into one species, Gigantopithecus plaki, which is found around Vietnam and a lot of Southeast Asia, China, for example. And is pretty, pretty weird. And there's lots of estimates thrown around their size, some evidence, uh, 
estimates, because you're only basing enough teeth, there's some estimates that have been like 270 kilograms, which is about almost twice the size of a male gorilla. And the most of, most of the recent estimates have kind of said about 200, 300 kilos, but these are most likely overestimates, just because we don't have enough of the anatomy to really know what Gigantopithecus looked like. And we know these guys were very much herbivores, like very similar to gorillas in that way. They ate a lot of uh, C3 plants, that means they eat lots of fruit, leaves and forest plants, or a generalist feeder. And it's a very interesting people, they well, not people, but very interesting animal. They lived in like broadleaf forests and tropical rainforests around Southeast Asia. They lived with animals like um, Cynomastodon, Megantarion, which is a saber tooth cat, um, Stegodon, early pandas, early relatives of a lot of our uh, modern animals that we see today, like um, Gower, uh, Hyenas, all those guys, Munjak, uh, extinct and living pigs, very interesting bunch. So they're believed to have gone extinct about 300,000 years ago due to a southwest retreat in the forests during the middle Pleistocene, which was cooling. So that may have affected a lot of the habitat, which means that it would have opened up to savanna, which would have been beneficial for a lot of these larger animals, but probably didn't work out well. It also has been speculated that um, Homo erectus, which is the first species of uh, Homo to leave Africa, may have contributed to these guys' extinction, because there is evidence of a lot of other larger species going into decline when erectus moves into the Amer um, to Asia. And if you guys are into your cryptozoology, a lot of these guys believe that Bigfoot is a Gigantopithecus, which is obviously not really founded on much evidence, but it's kind of all big ape. Bigfoot also big ape. Must be the same, of course, but most likely died out thousands of years ago, which is pretty recent, considering a lot of our earliest human relatives, like Homo erectus, probably were around the sky. And Considering it's a Zoo Tycoon mod and is trying to fit on the rig of the Iranosaurus, I think it came out surprisingly well. And is, I think the original mod for Zoo Tycoon was done by Blurt Gecko, or Burnt Gecko. I think it just came out alright. Not too bad, if I do say so myself. Probably won't be keeping it though. I think it just looks funny. Funny big monkey. I like big monkey. Who doesn't like a big monkey? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, so... Now we're moving on to the next area, so now we've got some carnivores. So here we've got Baryonyx, also done by Wheat. So this is cool. I really like this, how this one came out because Wheat originally just did an edit to fix up the Baryonyx since he's, his modeling has improved quite a bit, so this one came out really, really nice. But then Mr. Trudon, who's very famous for making a lot of those JW uh, Jurassic World and Jurassic Park kind of era mods, he made uh, he applied his Lost World and Jurassic Park original skins to the Baryonyx. So you can have those skins on an accurate or yeah, scientifically accurate uh, proportion and stuff uh, uh, Baryonyx, which I think came out really well. This is my favorite, honestly. I'm really, really liking this. Uh, this is the Lost World one from 1997. I really like how this one came out because it's just like a simple greenish uh, gray. The other ones are kind of really bright, but if you're into that, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it just came out really, really well. So there's two versions, you can either get just the base model with the base textures from the base game. You can get the 9093 one, which is, of course, based on the original Jurassic Park. And then you can get the 1997 one, which is, I'm showing here with this seam hunting. It's really awesome when they add these fish feeders, it really adds to the Spinosaurs. So this is probably pretty much how... Uh, Baryonyx would have hunted in the wild, sticking its nose into water to feel the vibrations of fish and strike.
So now I think he's gonna go off and do his own thing. I really like this one. I'm definitely keeping this one. Wonder, wonder, wonderful. And now we'll be moving on to the next one. We have got... Now this one's also weird. It's kind of the symbol of ancient Gig Gigantopithecus one, but not quite as weird. It's replacing Ankylosaurus, but it's... It's Dinosuchus. So this replaces the Ankylosaurus, since that's probably what fits it the way best. Kind of looks a little weird. Um, there are crocs that can gallop, but obviously some of the larger ones can't really gallop. But that is what it is. So Dinosuchus is a giant crocodile. It resembles quite a lot like a modern alligator, but it has some very big differences. From the Lake Cretaceous, about 82 to 73 million years ago. And the name means terrible crocodile. And um, these guys are very famous if you guys watch like Prehistoric Park or anything. These guys are very, very big and powerful crocodiles. Lived around the east coast of the Western Ontario Seaway and were probably lived a lot like alligators and crocodiles today and hunting like dinosaurs and things. So that's very interesting. The largest ones, the largest adults that we have reached about 12 meters long and they were covered in these osteoderms. We actually have a study that suggests they may have lived up to 50 years that like uh, mo with a rate that's similar to modern crocodilians but they just grew uh, a lot longer than modern crocs wonderful looking guy there we're going for a run this is an ankylosaurus so it's going to eat plants even though crocs don't really eat plants even though there are populations of crocodiles that do eat like some plants occasionally and there's potentially a few different species. There's uh, there's three. There's Rugos, there is Ronogredensis and Shimonawai, which was described just this year. And very, very interesting. The largest one, I think, is uh, Ronogredensis, which is about 12 meters long. That's among the largest crocodilians, along with like Prosuchus and Sakasuchus, some of the biggest ones. So these guys lived on both sides of the Western Ontario Seaway, like Utah, uh, Utah, Montana, North Carolina, Texas, things like that. And there may be different species between that. So they may have lived sort of like saltwater crocodiles, they may have preferred estuary environments and brackish waters. And although they have been found in marine deposits, it's not quite as clear if they lived like saltwater crocodiles, but they have been found in marine deposits. Which is also possible since even you find animals like Borealopelta in marine deposits, just because they can be washed out to sea. So it's, that doesn't really indicate whether they did live out at sea. But they may have been able to uh, tolerate swimming large distances like that. You can see them grazing there. <laughs> so yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty cool animal. I think it's really interesting how they did the osteoderms on this one. It doesn't quite... There's like a recent skeletal has come out that shows it looked a little bit different than this. This is pretty much just like a giant Nile crocodile. I'm sure with some edits you could really make a really really nice Dinosuchus. It already looks quite nice as a crocodile as it is. I really like how they did the osteoderms because croc osteoderms are so recognizable and are really good for detailing. Especially if you guys play Planet Zoo. I really love the crocodiles in Planet Zoo. So this one came out really really well. <laughs> That's awesome. I like this a lot. I bet they don't swim. Imagine if someone made a Dinosuchus for Planet Zoo and they now swim as a saltwater crocodile. That'd be awesome. But yeah, that's a wonderful one. So now we should be moving on to last but not least. I saved to some of the coolest ones for last. This replace, replaces the Atrocanthosaurus. We have... Now this is Dinocarus, who has a very, very storied history. A very, very interesting dinosaur. This guy was found in the 1970s, and it was known to be an ornithomimid. A very, very weird one, albeit. It was only known from its arms, and its name means terrible claw, or horrible hand, actually. That's probably the better translation. And a lot of people were like, we have no idea what it looks like, we just know it from its arms. But, 
In 2014, we found two complete, more complete specimens, which really showed this really, really weird look to it. It had this long spoonball like snout and this weird hump back. So this showed that often animals probably looked a lot weirder than we realized. And yeah, that kind of, and it's very unusual for an ornithomimosaur. It got up to about 11 meters and weighed up to six, seven tons. And it may be the largest animal with feathers. There's believed to be the tail ended in a pycna style, which is uses to anchor the large feathers of the tail, which may indicate that it may have had a fan of feathers. And it's really interesting to think that something this big and weird could have had feathers. And it also has highly um, humatized bone, which means it's highly hollow, which allows it to save uh, some weight, so it's not quite as heavy as you expect. Very, very interesting animal from Mongolia. And we have a lot of interesting implications for its paleobiology. It lived with a lot of weird animals. It also believed that they grew rapidly. We have like histology. They grew rapidly. They reached sexual maturity. Uh, they grew rapidly, then became sexually mature. And they have lines of arrested growth. That means that the holotype of the animal was an adult. So that's probably as big as they got. And the diet's another weird thing. They may indicate that it may have had a very specialized diet. So it may just have a mix of really whatever. Some people that think it may have been herbivorous, or maybe eat more fish, it's eat sort of like a giant weird duck. Very, very interesting animal. But it's also believed since that lived with Therizinosaurus, which is another very, very weird looking dinosaur, it may have avoided competing, it may have been similar to sloths, or even... It was originally hypothesized that it was like, a, before we knew the body, it was actually specialized for climbing, and it was kind of like a giant ground sloth. Or a giant tree slot, you could say, but clearly um, they believe that it was something to do with water, because the spoonbill was really adapted for eating stuff in the water. Very interesting, interesting animal. So it's found in the Nemec formation in Mongolia, with early Maastrichtian, about 70 million years ago. It's found with animals like uh, Aliaramus. Uh, a lot of uh, Gigantoraptor and Therizinosaurus, as another good example. Uh, Tarbosaurus, I believe. A very, very interesting bunch. Saurolophus, and also some other sauropods that lived there, some titanosaurs. So it's a very, very interesting habitat. Very different from Mongolia as today. It was like a lot of large rivers and lots of uh, floodplains. So a very, very different habitat than Mongolia is now. I like that. I really think they actually nailed it quite well. I know that them. Um, I think Duck was going to work on one and make it work with the uh, Indominus Rex. I think that'd be pretty cool, but I think this is a pretty cool substitute. I quite like this one. So yeah, I think that probably ends our video now with our wonderful calling guy there. <laughs> so yeah, this is another good set of mods. I'll obviously put the link in the description, of course. So yeah. I really, really, really hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And always remember to click that little bell icon at the bottom there. So you always get notified whenever I upload any videos. So you'll be the first one to watch it. So yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And bye-bye.